Hi there and welcome to another workout for you to row along to. Now we're going to get straight into a five minute warm up and I will describe what today's session is during that warm up. But we do have to set up our machine first. Now in a concept two that means going straight to the drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be. Now if you don't know about drag factor I do have a video here on this channel but just set the lever between four and five okay. You could do too low isn't the issue, too high is where it becomes a bit of a problem. If you're on a non-concept two just set the resistance or whatever you have you get a nice feel from the stroke but it's not too heavy you don't have to heave against it next up if you're able to please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down and finally if you can adjust the height of your foot stretches your foot plates get them to a point so you're able to come to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically comfortably okay um, if you're set too high you might not be able to quite get there or your knees start opening out if you're set too low you might scoot straight past and that can cause hyperextension of your back and nobody wants that so Five minute warm up. We're going to start this at around about 20 strokes a minute. And I just want you to think about enough of a push from your feet as though you are just standing up. Okay, so not much for the first minute because um, we're going to just think about our power connection. Don't worry, bear with and I will tell you what I mean by that. So here we go. In three, two, one, go. So all I want you to do is push with your feet enough that you know you're putting some force in. Okay. And then I want you to think about the timing between when you push your feet and when your hands connect the handle to the machine. And that means like on a concept two, when the chain connects the cog to the flywheel, that point when you can feel kind of bracing against the stroke. You should know what I mean. If you're on a water rower, it's like when the blades start spinning against the water. So you want that push from your feet to happen at exactly the same time your hands connect to your machine. And then if you have a forwards tilt towards the front of the machine, your arms are straight, you have a nice posture, not slumped and rounded. As you push your feet, that power should transfer from your feet into the machine and you'll hear a satisfying whoosh. Now, when you've got that timing right, you can start to think about increasing power a little bit. After all, this is a warm up, so you need to make sure we start to get warm. But it's also not uh, going really fast up. <laughs> so, from an effort out of 10 point of view, we're looking at about 5 out of 10, which really just means your heart rate starts to rise your breathing rate starts to rise but you can still hold the conversation and it doesn't feel like you're working hard it just feels like you're going for a gentle row that's really it if you have a 2k training pace then I want you to be around about 2k plus 18 okay and that brings us to today's main session which is four 10 minute intervals with one minute's rest in between and your pace will be between 2k plus 12 and 2k plus 15 which is round about seven or eight out of ten which is round about working quite hard <laughs> so really you should need to push to hold on at that pace but you should still be able to manage it. You just have to concentrate to be able to row that fast for the 10 minute intervals. Then you get a wee break. Then you start off again, do that four times. Right, three strokes time. We put one foot on the floor. One more. So take one foot out, stick it on the floor, continue rowing. And this just helps open up your hips helps with a little bit of flexibility of that angle forwards and backwards but also helps you get into those angles that forwards tilt at the front and the backwards lean at the back funnily enough let's take one more then we're going to swap feet one goes in ah one goes out always remember to lift your feet up on a concept two at that point don't just pull out because <laughs> then your heels get stuck 
especially on my shoes with got quite pointy heels on them so just continue rowing with that single leg three more two more and last one here and then just put both legs or both feet back in the straps legs straight and roll with your back and arms so swing over your hips pull in your arms then out with your arms tilt forwards over your hips again but the important thing here is that you pick up that initial tension that connection of the chain with your backswing not by pulling early with your arms one more here now let's roll to the front I'll tighten my straps on the way uh, forwards tilt arms straight and just push with the legs not too hard because what I want you to do is continue to work on the timing of your feet and hands connecting at the same time but also holding this forwards tilt and arm straight position okay so that you can get used to driving out with arm straight and your forwards tilt okay that's our five minute warm up finished and it absolutely flew by now we're about to hit the main session which is actually a revisit to a row I did two years ago so don't be surprised when after this title card I look entirely different all right then, so today we're gonna to be doing four 10 minute intervals with one minute rest. Now you're gonna be doing each of these intervals at 24 strokes a minute, so stay with me for the stroke rate, and your pace is gonna be between 2K plus 12 and 2K plus 15. It's your choice what one you pick. If you go for the plus 12, it's gonna to be top end mid workout, maybe getting into the top tier, um, and probably best suited if you're training for a half hour or 60 minute time trial. If you go for the plus 15, then you're gonna be more into just the solid mid tier. Still gonna be really hard work and you'll feel it getting harder as you get towards the end, but it shouldn't break you, okay? I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so do you wanna get into this with me? Let's do it. Got 40 minutes ahead of us. And you know me, I'm just going to carry on talking to you for the 40 minutes anyway, so why top load it here with me waffling away at you, eh? Right, have a quick drink. I'll give you a couple seconds just to shake yourself down, swallow, get yourself strapped in. You good? Okay, so I'll count you down in three, two, one, go. At 24, I've said before, is my favourite stroke rate. I'm still not entirely sure whether that's just because it's one stroke every two and a half seconds and it makes it really easy to count down but rhythm wise I just love 24 if I could do all my rowing at 24 I would but hey I think it'd get a bit dull after a while so I'll give you a minute just to set yourself into this. Hopefully you'll have picked what your stroke pace is gonna be. Stroke rate is 24, remember. Almost fluffed my line. But hopefully before you started, you'll have decided whether you're wanting to go for the harder plus 12 option. or the easier plus 15 I mean going by most of the stroke power index calculation at 24 stroke rate you would want to row at 2k plus 12 but as we were doing this for 40 minutes it takes on a different calculation the 2k plus 12 is more geared towards time trials preparing yourself to go fast for like a 2k 5 half hour whatever whereas over 40 minutes plus 15 it's geared more towards just the general training strength fitness point of view
So, quick word about technique. Regardless of the pace you're going at, I want you to try and hold your 24 strokes without messing up your stroke. So this may be faster than you're used to from a stroke rate. It's likely to be slower than you're used to. I know a lot of people out there tend to have like 28 is their standard stroke rate. So 24 actually feels like a low rate <laughs> stroke rate. So whatever way you're approaching this, just try and maintain fluidity in order to hit the rate. This is a still a stroke rate that is best served with a powerful drive and then a longer recovery. So then really when you start getting up to 28 and higher, you get closer to a one-to-one -one ratio of drive and recover. So you may have your own way of doing it, but I do recommend trying to follow me for the rhythm. Drive, finish, to so go drive, finish, release, recover. Let's try it again. Drive, finish, release, recover. Drive, finish, release, recover. Right, I'm not gonna do that too often. I'll end up unable to breathe and flapping around on the floor. Right, so we're halfway there. Let's just cover a couple of technique aspects and then build on them in the next interval. I mentioned the body lean and the body angle in the warm-up. So let's just talk about that again so you know what I'm on about and why I'm saying it. Basically, when you get to the front of the stroke here, known as the catch here, you want to be leaning forwards as though on a clock face you're pointing to one o'clock. Now that helps the power get through your posterior chain, through your arms which we'll talk about in the next interval. And then into the handle and the flywheel. So this forward lean really does help as opposed to if you started off already leaning backwards, at which point you suddenly take it all in your lower back and your shoulders. So from a forward lean, it's just about power transfer. So make sure and have that one o'clock. And if you can, maintain it as long as possible. So if I go drive, so drive, I don't even know how long I'm holding it for, but hopefully 
it's long enough that you can see I'm trying to hold it. Then, as you get towards your legs almost finishing your drive, you want to swing your back, rocking through the hips, into the opposite lean. So if you're leaning in to one o'clock, that means you lean back only to 11 o'clock. So what I don't want is 10 o'clock. I know a lot of people do that. I'm not going to say they're wrong, but I'm trying to get across what's considered as the safest, most energy efficient stroke. So swing your back to the 11 o'clock and then by the time you get the handle away, you want to have your body leaning forwards again so that the entire slide back up the rail is already in that forward lean. And that's all about efficiency, using the fewest muscles possible to recover and also about a fluid motion. If you can just think about rock back, forwards, rock back, forwards. There's a nice rhythm to it. You hear me talking about rhythm a lot. Okay, so in four, three, two, one, you get a wee rest. So just a minute. So maybe wiggle your butt in the seat, have a drink. Continue to slide. Oh, hang on. Are we seat pads gonna miss? Gonna awry? There we go. I have a very delicate butt. I don't really. It's like the princess in the pee, though. I could feel it slightly off. <laughs> I'm like, this doesn't feel right at all. I need to fix this. I can't, con can't possibly continue like this. Now, as, the, as Sarah from You Can Row 2 says, Pick your butt off the seat, reseat yourself, get ready for the next interval, okay? Starting in 10 seconds, same thing again. Probably quite similar chat as well, to be honest, but in five, four, three, two, one. Interval two. It'd be funny if I just replayed the last interval at this stage. I could go back inside. Have a wee hot chocolate or something. Just pretend. Right, so try and get into your rhythm and back up to your pace that you were at the last time round as soon as possible. If you're one of the people doing this base purely on an effort point of view, then even if it feels harder as we go through the four intervals, I want you to stay at the same pace. So if you picked 204 for your first interval, I want you to pick 204 for this one and the next two as well. It's not about keeping it at six out of 10 effort the whole way through and going slower. It's about holding pace. If you're a heart rate based training, maybe you'd go slower, but not the way I do it. 
I don't train based around heart rate. No, there's nothing valid about heart rate training. I think if I trained around heart rate zones, I'd probably probably be singing from a different songbook, but something I've never done. Partly because I can turn up to any gym anywhere and train based on 2k pace with the only thing I need is the knowledge of what my 2k time is whereas if I was doing heart rate based training and I forgot my heart rate monitor I'd be a bit lost in that session for how I was doing it's the same reason I don't wear shoes yeah, part of it is I feel I get a better connection with the foot plate but I've got to say more than half of it is because I don't want to be tied into having to take my special pair of shoes around with me means I don't have to pack anything other than shorts and a t-shirt and a towel for the gym I could turn up in a pair of cowboy boots and it's not going to affect my rowing because I row in socks although I would like to try rowing in a pair of cowboy boots by the way I'm assuming while I'm going through all this stuff that you're being a good student and thinking about your back leaning from 1 to 11 if not I want you to write out 20 times I must not be entertained by the funny Scotsman <laughs> you can change funny to whatever word you want Anyway, what was I? Oh yeah, shoes. The other thing is it means I can pack lightly when I'm traveling to competitions and things. I don't have to worry about taking a pair of bulky Adidas Powerlists or even a pair of Converse with me. I just have to worry about wearing clean socks. I can always go barefoot, but I'll save you from my feet. All right, halfway through again. Let's start talking about a little bit higher up the body this time as we go through second set of technique tips. should already have noticed a change if you're thinking about your back so maybe maybe that you're going slightly slower because you're used to not doing that but persevere with it it's just because you're doing something you're not used to so as far as your arms are concerned, let's take it once again from the front catch position. Starting at the very tip with your fingers. I want you to hold on to the handle lightly with your fingers just hooked over the handle. Your thumbs underneath, lightly touching 
your index fingers, but, and importantly, but, not choking the life out the handle you're not. You're not about to go to war. So a nice hook with the fingers, which has the benefit of a tiny bit more reach, but also lets the air circulate around your fingers and your palms. So once you've got your relaxed fingers, continue that with relaxed shoulders and arms. But importantly, I want straight arms. Okay? No bend to the elbows. If anything, I want you to rotate. Do it again. Rotate your elbows slightly downwards to the floor. You should, as you do that, feel your lats here engage, which is the muscle you want when pulling the handle in. You don't want to do it just from the shoulders or the biceps. Then with your straight arms, nice and relaxed, keep them straight until your leg drive is finished and your body rock is almost finished. Then pull in your arms, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Send your elbows through and that's the finish. Nice powerful finish. As much as I say this isn't a pulling motion, it is at the end. So it's push and pull. Push there, pull here. So push, swing, pull. Push, swing, pull. Okay? And I've got a minute to go through the recovery. So the pace you brought the handle into your chest at, release it from your chest. So in, out. And get it straight again. Rotate those elbows. Straight, rotate. Straight, rotate. Straight, rotate. Get them over the knees before your knees bend. And then you'll find with your body rock and your straight rotate, you're in the perfect position at the front of the next stroke to, well, take the next stroke. Straight, rotate. Out, straight, rotate. In, out, straight, rotate. <laughs> okay, three, two, last stroke, one. I made it just in time. Quick drink, just flush yourself off a bit. Just reseat your butt. I mentioned during the last interval, but do hunt out. You can row two, letter U, number two. I want to say Sarah Fullman, but every single time I bring her name up, over and over again, I talk about her tips. And over and over again, I don't remember her name. <laughs> I've even got in touch with her and said, do you mind if I talk about you on my videos? She's like, yeah, go for it. I can at least have the decency to mention her actual name. Right, 10 seconds to go, we're into interval three. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So interval three, and as I spend the next few minutes just talking nonsense to you, I want you to concentrate on your back rock from 1 to 11 to 1 
But I also want you to alternate your concentration from the back rock to the arms, okay? So, straight arms, and then fit only, only as your leg and back rock are finished do you pull in. I don't want to see you grabbing from the front with the shoulders, okay? This isn't what you do. Maybe fun. Yes, that's not how you roll. You do it with straight arms. I'll explain why at interval four. It's a cliffhanger for you. You're going to be very disappointed. I'm actually going to make a separate video as to why as well. So yeah, concentrate on them. Well, let's just talk away at you for the next three minutes. I hope you're keeping up okay with your pace and the stroke rate. I've gone for the 2K plus 15 option, mostly just so I can speak to you and not have to worry about doing a two second buffer or anything. I can just row, keep my eye on the first force curve on the monitor, which is showing clearly that I have a massive power leak at the start of my stroke which is usually because I'm not doing the not holding that forward lean and I don't think I'm quite snapping in to the catch at the front of the stroke which is what my interval 3 technique tip will cover Now you may, if you're eagle-eyed and used to my videos, have spotted that I'm rowing at a much lower drag factor than normal. The lever, usually, I have it sit and run about six on this machine, which gives me a drag factor of about 145. I reduced it recently to, well, where is it? Kind of between three and four, which has given me a drag factor of 110. This is all because of my mystery shoulder issue. I'm hoping that reducing the weight of the flywheel and not fighting against it but using leg power instead will take whatever pressure it is that's preventing my shoulder from healing and well, let it heal I've taken long rest periods over the past three years and they haven't helped so I'm going down the active recovery hoping that building muscle around it will help who knows once lockdown is over and I can see a real life physio I think it's time I went to see a real life physio Okay, so hopefully you were doing what I said and concentrating on your back and your straight arms and your finish. 
remember and rotate those elbows down just a little bit so with upper body disgust let's talk about the legs and again we'll start at the catch at the front for what position they're meant to be in which is shins vertical okay try and keep those shins at vertical and hopefully without having to flare your knees out to do so try and keep them tucked inside if you think that your two arms create a cage try and keep your knees inside that cage even when at the front trying to get them to vertical also try and get to vertical without needing to lift your heels too far off the foot plate why? because the further your heels get off the foot plate the later it is that your heels come back down to it again I'm a genius <laughs> anyway so shins at vertical not past vertical because then well the same thing happens the longer it takes to get your leg drive sorted on the foot plate and then in interval four I'll give you a tip for what to do if you can't get to vertical I can't remember what the other tip was I'm supposed to be giving you <laughs> oh yeah why you have straight arms so anyway your shins are vertical and then as you start the leg drive plant those heels right down into the foot plate and think about pushing the machine away from you with your legs remember I said it's a pushing it's a pushing motion <laughs> so you push with your legs and then pull with your arms And then just stay connected and press with your legs through the whole stroke until they're straight don't lock the knees though just straight and then once the hands are over the knees bend your knees and you will in conjunction with your forward lean effortlessly slide to the front of the machine again ready to get your shins back to vertical and ready for the next stroke it's magic the only thing really I'd add is that your legs really are the ones that control your stroke rate how hard do you drive with your legs kind of decides the speed of your drive so if you have a very lazy leg drive <coughs> that will affect your rhythm whereas a good powerful drive is what you want two last stroke one there we go three down one to go <sighs> again my heart rate's slightly higher than it should <sighs> because it's because um, I'm talking away to you mostly it means it works my cardio system harder 
but comfortably in a mid training zone. So hopefully you are too. Oh, make sure and drink if you haven't. One more to go. What do I have to talk about? Something about legs, oh yeah. And then something about straight arms. So, 10 seconds to go. Last one in five, four, three, two, one. Interval four. So if you can, same as before, shift your attention from your back, swinging from one to 11, then your arms going from straight, and so straight, rotate, straight, finish, straight, rotate. Oops, hang on, sorry, too busy showing off to you. Should be two more strokes and we'll be back in time again. There we go, sorry about that. Slowed right down and had to go back up to 26, 27 then to get pace right. Hopefully you either ignored me that time round or you followed me and we're back in this together. You and me together, forever. So yeah, so concentrate on your backswing, on your arms, on your arm recovery, and then concentrate on your leg drive. I mean, rowing stroke is something that you have to work at. It's also something that when bad habits develop, it's really hard to get them out of your system. For instance, I keep on talking about the power leak I have. I've got this butt scoot before my drive starts that I just can't get rid of. I'm losing about six inches on every drive. I just don't know what's causing it. Anyway. So, tip number one, or at least explanation number one. And this is the one I'm gonna make a video about, why you row, or why you drive the straight arms. I've said it before, so apologies if this is a repeat, but imagine standing with your arms straight by your side, fists closed, and then somebody comes up and holds on to both of your fists from underneath and tries to pick you up. If you have straight arms, like this, it should be relatively easy for that person to pick you up. However, do it again, but this time, put a bend in your elbows. So stand up tall, Put a bend in your elbows, fists closed, and now ask that person to lift you up. They either won't be able to do it, or it'll take a massive amount of effort to do it. Because their muscles, shoulders, elbows, everything, is soaking up the energy that you're putting into them in order to try and lift them. So, on a rowing stroke, bent elbows are soaking up power as you fight with a flywheel. 
whereas straight arms let the power flow through your body and into the handle without any leakage and after all when we're rowing we want all the power to go into the flywheel and not soaked up by your muscles quickly talking about power one thing I haven't mentioned is not stopping yourself with the foot straps so when you get to the end of the leg drive try not to yank on the foot strap to stop yourself try and get your entire leg drive done before your back swing and your arms pull in and that way you won't have to stop yourself with the foot strap and then by getting those hands away and the body rock you will slide up the rail without having to yank on the foot strap to pull yourself forward I do a lot of rows on this channel with my feet out of the straps just to prove that to you the straps are there well for me once I get above about 28 strokes a minute I kind of need them as a safety net anyway so next tip is about trying to get your legs to vertical at the front your shins my tip is to get a post-it note and when you're finished with rowing in fact I'll show you afterwards but not during a session but in between try and set a mirror or something next to the machine and roll forwards until your shins are at vertical and then at that position place the post-it note in front of the wheels on the seat so that marks how far you would need to go in order to get your shins vertical and then all you have to do is get on the row machine row some strokes and try and get the feel for how far you have to roll forwards until you feel a tiny click as the wheel hits the post-it note you'll just feel it click click not enough to stop you just enough to give you the sensation that you've gone far enough and if after about 20 strokes you haven't felt that click get another post-it note and put it like an inch further back so you don't have to roll quite as far to feel that click take a few strokes hopefully this time you'll feel it so then roll for a while then maybe move it a little bit closer to your vertical shin point but not all the way and then roll a few strokes or an entire session hunting for that click and then every time you get on just move it a little bit further forwards feeling that sensation about how far you have to roll forwards until you feel that click now eventually enough time your flexibility will improve and you'll get to vertical and importantly you'll have the brain sensation of what it feels like what I don't recommend and I'm sorry to say some people do but hey I don't is tying a exercise band or something thick around the rail which stops you so you get to a certain point and then thunk 
it would stop you mid-slide. That does nothing to teach you the sensation. All it is is a like a dumb waiter that just goes, yeah, you've gone far enough. <laughs> but your brain hasn't done anything to feel what it feels like. So if you take the band off, you've got no idea. My way, if you took it off, you'll have learned how far to go. And actually, you don't even need to take it off. Two strokes. <sighs> Leaving the post-it note on the rail, it's gonna be so unobtrusive that you can just leave it there until you know you're hitting that point. Anyway. Hi again. So one of the reasons I wanted to do revisits on a few of my rows is because the end of my original ones were always a little bit loose and sloppy. I'd rant for a long time and you just have to sit and watch. Now what I've started doing recently is a section on stretching while I rant. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we're going to get into our two minute cool down as always and then we're going to do a stretching session at the end. Okay, it only lasts about six minutes, don't worry, but it's important that you stretch. So cool down. Uh, Take this down to kind of pretty much what your warm-up pace was, around about 20 strokes a minute and about 5 out of 10 effort, just enough to let your body cool down after what was just quite a tough session, okay? So here we go, in 3, 2, 1, let's go. And it must be said, it's not just about your body, the cool down. It's also about your mind, especially for that kind of session, the 4, 10 minute intervals, when you have to hold on to your pace and you're kind of focusing on technique and trying not to slip and all that stuff it can be very mentally taxing then when you add in some buffoon on a rowing machine talking to you at the same time and you're trying to listen to him or ignore him depending on your point of view then it is a little bit of an onslaught for your for your brain so cool downs are always a good thing all round lets your heart rate kind of settle rather than just going from beating up at like 80% of max if not higher and then just kind of going down to resting you throw in a cool down to just kind of give it a little bit more of a slow down ramp instead of a plummet I've said before in videos that the word plummet is hardly ever used in a good way it's usually markets plummeted or the car plummeted off the edge of a cliff it's never really never really say my 2k time plummeted doesn't sound right does it so you don't want your heart rate to plummet either and you just want to have just a moment just to think about technique make sure if you're doing anything wacky at the end of today's session that you're back to straight arms, forward tilt, push, swing, pull, push, swing, pull. Okay, I'm going to take one more stroke and then that's me done on the cool down. Now, of course, you don't have to stop cooling down. If you want to just carry on rowing and just have this video running, then please do. Or if you don't have time to stretch, then please at least stretch your quads and your hamstrings, okay? Don't do it in the shower. Don't wait to slip and fall, but at least do your quads and your hamstrings. If you're able to hang around, then Stretchy John has just appeared in the top corner of the screen and he will take you through some very structured stretches. And I'm going to do the same, but on the rowing machine. Okay, so this is good if you don't have space around you, like stre stretching mats or anything. So we're going to start off with hamstrings. So put both feet into the straps, but loose straps, and then hands in the air and then fold forwards. Okay, so it's like you're folding your chest down to your legs. So you're not curving your lower back. You're not particularly covering your upper back either, but the key here is that fold and you should really feel a nice stretch right in here, right in the hamstrings. If you don't, there's a good chance that maybe you've got your knees bent and that's kind of getting in the way and that's why you don't get the stretch or maybe there's something going wrong with your feet. Maybe you didn't get that fold right, so have another go, put your hands in the air, fold forwards and hopefully you'll feel it right there. If it's right under your knees, you've not quite got it right either. You want it to be under, like in your legs, right in here in the, the hamstrings, okay? Oh, so let's do quads, uh, sorry quads, let's do glutes next. So one leg up on the rail, bring your other foot over so that your heel sits in the crook of your knee. Bring this leg across your body so it's in line with your other knee, hold it in place, hold on to the back of the machine and then rotate a little bit. And you should feel right in here, right in your glute. 
gets a nice little stretch depending on how much you're rotating down into it, how much you're pulling this leg across your body, all that can affect, and like even how your angle of this, your outer shoulder is, all that stuff can, can just be a tiny little tweak to change the amount of stretch you get in your glutes. I'm gonna change legs, now I'm gonna ignore you, or not ignore you, but I'm gonna face away from you. So the same thing, bring that leg across, rotate down, and you should feel it right in the glutes. And remember, it's the glutes you're aiming for here. It's not, it's not your lower back, it's not your quads, it's not your hamstrings. It's right then, basically the butt muscle. That's what we're trying to stretch here. So you should feel it right in the side of the hips, basically. And that should just give you a nice little stretch in there, which they may have, after today's session, taken a bit of a battering, let's say. So let's do quads next. I'm going to do this one standing up. So you can initially stick a finger on the machine to just keep yourself balanced. Flick up that foot, hold your heel against your backside. And then if you can try to have a straight line from your shoulder down through your hips into your knee while you're holding tension of that foot up against your backside, that should give you a stretch in your quads. If it doesn't, then maybe you've got something misaligned. Remember and hold on to the, the kind of the, uh, the front part of your foot, the kind of the big part of your foot, not your toes. What would that be called? Forefoot? No. Uh, um, bridge of your foot? Is that what you call it? But you don't want to be grabbing your toes. If you grab your toes, you can start stretching ligaments off your toes, and that's not really what you're trying to do. You're trying to get that stretch down here into your quads. And remember, this is about quads down here. It's not about hip flexors. Your hip flexors should actually feel, when you're doing this, not loose, but they shouldn't feel tight. They shouldn't feel stretched at this point. It's here. It's your quads that are meant to feel it. Because we're doing the hip flexors next, now I'm going to do the version where I put my knee down on the ground, but you can do exactly the same thing I'm about to do, but you can lift this knee off the ground if you don't want to touch the ground. It just turns it into a little bit more strain onto your front foot. But that knee on the ground, toes up, nice 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle on the front foot. Oh God, mucky calf. And then push this hip forwards as this knee passes over your ankle. Okay, so whoop, like that. Okay, and that then, creates the stretch right up here in my hip flexors. So where before, my um, for the quad stretch, the quads were tight, and up here was relatively loose. It's the other way around now. Doing this, up here is nice and stretched, and down here is a little bit loose. I can still feel it's activated, because of how I'm sitting and things, but up here is now getting a really good stretch. And then swap legs. Same thing again. Go past, push that hip forwards. I do try and keep a good, again, posture here. Try and keep it nice and uh, well, just aligned really is the best word for it. Push that hip forwards and you'll find you get that stretch into your hip flexor. And remember, like I said in many a video, do check out uh, Jeff Cavalier, Athlean X. He's got a couple of videos about should you really be stretching your hip flexors? Is that the problem? Is, to, is it something else that's causing any kind of tightness? Could be tight hamstrings that you have. And you're just blaming it on the flip, hip flexors because that's what everyone seems to do nowadays. Let's do uh, forearms next. So put your hands together so you're praying and then bring them down in front of you while pushing them together, okay? Then as you do that, once you get down to here and your fingers and your wrists kind of make a right angle with each other, you should feel that underneath your arms and your forearms get a nice wee stretch, okay? And if you're pushing as well, like and your fingers are pushing against each other, your fingers will get a nice little kind of brace stretch as well, which if you have been rowing with a proper grip on the handle, which is hooking your fingers over the handle, it's a chance you could kind of be like, oh, the claw, the claw. So stretching them like this can actually open them back up slightly and kind of help if you've got a little bit cramp in your fingers. Uh, next up, shoulders. So hands straight in front of you, bring it across the side and then hold it against your body with the other arm. And then you should find that your delts get a nice stretch. You basically just uh, right that point where you have to, when you're rowing, if, or at least if you have your technique right and you're hanging off the handle as you drive, then it's right in here that that kind of tendon, the ligaments and things, um, that's where you can hang off on your shoulders and that's what you're stretching right now. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if it's not about tendons and ligaments and it's your muscles in your shoulders that are sore, it's a good chance that it's a technique thing and you're not hanging off the handle. You're probably pulling early at the front. Instead of letting that leg drive flow through your body into the handle, you're possibly grabbing, bending those, early, those elbows too early. Then everything comes up in here and binds up. Maybe your shoulders are up in your ears. Remember, you want to be nice, loose, like a zombie. Maybe you can have a little external rotation of your elbows just to help to switch off your shoulders and switch on your lats. Okay, uh, what's next? Biceps. Sorry, I almost hit my little carrot at the back. So put your hands behind you, swish. 
as though you're doing a ski jump and then rotate your thumbs outwards. Okay, and that lengthens the long head of your bicep or biceps and will give them a nice little stretch. But at the same time, it does contract your triceps, which is why if you've seen some of my other videos and you're like, why is he doing his biceps? I thought he always finished his biceps. I don't, I do triceps next now because this contracts my triceps. And what I found was that by stretching them first and then doing this, I undid all the work I did in the triceps. What's the point in that? So triceps then, put one hand up in the air, swish it down to your back, woohoo, so your fingers touch your spine. This elbow is almost pointing to the sky, but give it a little helping hand with your other hand to get it to point to the sky. And that should give you a nice stretch to your triceps. Now again, how much you stretch and how much you pull, how much you point your, your elbow to the sky, all that can be very different for you. So find what works for you, okay? Remember all of these stretches that I'm doing and the way I do them are what works for me. Swap arms, okay? So you might have a set of stretches that work better for you. You may have um, a different way that you stretch your triceps maybe uh, that works better for you. Uh, I, everything I do in these videos is just showing you how I do things and then you find out the best way for you. Apart from maybe rowing technique. I mean, what I say about rowing technique is right. Maybe what I do isn't, but, but what I say is. Right, and then there we go. I think, is that, is that everything? I think it is. That's me stretched everything. So there we go. So I hope uh, that this concept worked for you. So really what I've done, I ran out of time in the warm up to actually explain why I've done it. Quite, quite how, I don't know, but. Um, Basically, it's the older videos, the rows themselves are perfectly fine and functional and great and groovy and you'll get those same workout out of them. But what I find is that my intros were massively long and my outros were massively long and pointless, <laughs> okay? Intros maybe had a point, so I was telling what was going on. But then I also assume that you read the description, you know what the session is. You don't need to listen to me for three minutes telling what the session is because you just read it. But then at the end, when I used to go into these massive rants for like six, seven minutes, and I'd just be sitting here talking to you and you'd be like, well, what do I do? Um, I've started now do these stretching sessions to have that massive rant. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm repackaging up these uh, older rows, kind of bring, giving them back to life. Cause I know that people don't usually go back into the channel and kind of say, oh, what did he do four years ago? So um, that's what I'm doing, just bringing a couple of these back to life. Uh, and it, yeah, and hopefully it works for you. So do let me know if it does work or whether it's a waste of time. Um, hopefully it's not. Hopefully it works for you as well. So yeah, leave me a comment on this video and then do remember to check out any of the other videos I've got here. I've got hundreds of workouts. Um, I don't need to be repeating them, to be honest, there's so many of them. Um, I could just like just set them all, just wait for people to find, but I wanna think of different ways to present them to you. So that's what I'm doing. So hopefully I will see you in another video. Uh, until then, please look after yourselves. Take care, be well, bye-bye.